What's going on, guys? Welcome to a special Friday episode of Everyday Struggle. Of course, I'm Nadeska. You know DJ Academics. Our special guest today is Russ. Good morning. Oh, man, Russ in the building. What up, bro? We do the double fist bumps. Okay, is that, is <laughs> yeah, that like that? That's what you're doing. That's, that's what you're doing. Okay. So fresh off of New York Fashion Week, how was your performance yesterday? Uh, it was super tight. It was like a bunch of celebrities in a super small space at the same time. So it was cool because, like, I, you know, I'm not Jay at either, so it was, like, fresh. You know what I'm saying? We were, like... Front row was like it was a vibe. It's crazy. Sounds pretty nice. We never get invited. I mean, I'm not fashion. I can't, I, no, I, know, so, I can't uh, imagine. I can't imagine. I can't fashion at all. It's a weird world. All. Like you definitely could tell people like are super like that's their shit. Like all year, it's about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like as a performer, when <laughs> they're not acting like fans, they're nah. just kind of watching you. Like mm -hmm. you're fucking, <laughs> like I'm more famous than you. Mm. I feel like that's how it's in the movies. Honestly, right, right. like that. I mean, because that that world's a whole different other world. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. All right, look, so we have a lot of questions for you today, a lot to talk about, but we want to start with some fun because it is 7.30 in the morning. So let's Let start. Let it be known, set the setting. It's 7.30 and there's no one in the office. It's yeah. really early. It's like that's, that's lost in context when people I'm watch the show. I'm telling you, they think that you're supposed to be like, that's, ah, that's, that's, that's why you have Joe slapping the table <laughs> trying to do the most. Honestly, bro, I'm not mad. I might like step out to do jumping jacks. It's yeah. like crazy. All right, so we set the scene. Let's start with grade the bars. So we're going to grade this freestyle. Man's not hot. I know you guys have seen this. It's hilarious. <laughs> Let's take a look. It's a perspiration thing. <laughs> Boom. Yo. Ah. The thing goes. Skitty kick pop pop. And the poop 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 boom. Skia. Do 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 all right, fine, 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 the booth. You get me, man's not hot. I tell him, man's not hot. Ha, cut. I tell him, man's not hot. The girl told me, take off your jacket. I said, babes, man's not hot. Yo, man can. <laughs> He's got a hit, I think. Yeah. Right? Wasn't MC he? But wasn't he a comedian? He like, is. Like, Michael. Yeah. Michael Dapa. Dapa. I'm not sure if ain't I'm saying. Ain't nobody gonna tell me that ain't hotter than that Giggs verse on on Drake's verse. Yo, Stop you were playing. looking for Giggs trouble already. Right? Giggs verse fire. 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 You know what he's saying? I get what he's saying. Hey, you gotta Wait, understand like, what you understand. You gotta understand what it's moon, supposed to be. Like Drake, Wrong. like flowing on the record. That nigga coming with a hard voice. You gotta understand what it's even meant for. It's for London. You know what I'm saying? So like, we ain't in London right now. We in New York. I, that's nice, but people listen to that shit in London. You know what I'm saying? When you hear that shit in London, you're right. When I, when I did the show in London and I like just did that, like I played that verse, out of here, bro. Like out of here. Yeah, I know he has another song, Whipping Excursions, which was it, it's like a similar rhyme structure. People mm -hmm. fuck with it, but like when I was hearing it, yeah. But great, great um, little comedians or <laughs> comedy sketch about a dude. So Man's cool. not hot is definitely the slogan for the next couple months of me. You know what I mean? I like I like rocking. It ruined it when I found out he was a comedian because I was like, oh, I was hoping it ruined that it. this was real. I was hoping you were dead ass <laughs> serious about this shit. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Uh. All right, so Russ, um, just for fans who are not familiar, but they mm -hmm. should be, so your debut album, There's Really a Wolf, is out now, right? Yeah, and it just went gold. Just yeah, went gold. Congrats, bro. Two Thank platinum you. singles combined over a billion streams, sold out mm -hmm. shows across the world. You're mm -hmm. doing pretty hype for yourself right now. I would think so. Uh, so the first time we talked about you on this show, it was in regards to your little beef with pigeons and planes, I guess. I didn't have a beef with pigeons and planes I'm at just... all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they wanted to feature you in their segment called Numbers on the Board uh, to showcase how much mm. success you've had on your own, basically. Well, let me set up the entire thing. Oh, they sent me. Remember. They sent me an email. I don't know anything about Get any of that, that smoke, shit. man. I'm with you, bro. Nah. <laughs> no, go ahead. They sent me an email saying, yo, uh, it's super epic what you're doing. Can we get a quote for an interview or for a video? And I was like, mm, that's weird because I've sent y'all 90 emails, mm -hmm. you know, in the past of like, check this out, check this song. Songs that are not platinum and shit. And, you know, whatever. That was fine. And I was like, look. My Did you ever get a response or just no, dubbed? No, dubbed completely. Yeah. And I still have the emails and they know that. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yo, so you, you held on to that? Like, yo, man, I can't. If I, what, I mean, my thing is like, what world do we live in where like you get to get sunned by like a company or whatever it is? numerous times over and over again and then when they come reaching out because now my platform is popping yeah. mm -hmm. and you want to quote from me for your platform that's probably not even as popping as mine okay i'm supposed to just like tuck my tail and be like anything for you pigeon it's like no, i don't think i, I don't think they were expecting I, I that though yeah, i'm definitely this uh, defending pigeon plays slam them. no anyway. no but, but like my so my <laughs> response in the confidentiality of an email was uh you know so my, quote, my, it, my quote 
I don't want, I literally said, no, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. But my quote is blogs don't matter. And I said, have a nice day. That was that. I didn't know they were going to use anything. They didn't ask if they could use anything. That was an email. Mm -hmm. So they did some like screenshot, post your email shit. So I didn't know they were going to do that. And it, it was But they agreed it was. with you though. Yeah, that's they how, that's how I was right. cool with it. Because yeah. I was like, you know what? Like, okay. Well, wait, hold on. But like, suppose they didn't, because I get, a, I get tons of emails. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people send me SoundCloud links. No, I get that. And you know what I mean? I would have to do that all day, just respond to emails. Like, imagine somebody I get blow it. up later and be like, Yo, I sent you five emails like in 2013. And now he's mad at me because I didn't nah, see Nah, but the thing open. is like, also Pigeons and Planes have yeah. posted me before. And the only time they ever posted me was like uh, a piece that they did where it was like the five type of submissions that we get. And it was like, I was named as one of the like submissions and it was like the spammer. And they were trying to like shit on me. Oh, okay. I see. This is okay, context. So this, is con okay. this is context. We never knew this. All right. Um, so That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't feel like, you know, my mom always told me like innocent people don't need to defend themselves. You feel yeah. me? So that's why I was just like, whatever. But then I did it anyway because motherfuckers were tripping because mm -hmm. all these weirdo ass bloggers like started hitting me up from the past. And all I was really trying to say is that the era of your song getting posted on a blog and that changing your life is dead. That's a dumb and I don't think I don't think many people disagree with you on that. Yeah, I guess that's the thing was, was they were I just. Mean, I think the the the, the 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 rap blog is dead. I mean, just it just doesn't matter. I know, but yeah. besides that, because we're gonna talk more about that and the rise of people like academics and how SoundCloud yeah. helped you without those. Mm -hmm. I guess my question to you is, even on your new song, The Game, right? Mm -hmm. You also say, you know, fuck MTV. They snubbed <laughs> you for lesser artists and stuff yeah. like that. It, this comes up often in your music. Mm -hmm. And again, not that people disagree. Yeah. But I wonder yeah. about the way you approach. Well, I think, I, think, I think rap is too sensitive now. You know what I'm saying? And now, when I say that, I sound maybe crazy. No, I don't think you sound crazy. Well, to you, that's beautiful. But like to a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you're bitter, ah, uh ah. -huh. The thing is, right? It seems like you got a chip on your shoulder, though. Yeah, but, but that's rap, and that's hip hop. You feel no, me? But I think for, from you probably yeah. working hard, putting in the work, and getting yeah. ignored, now you're finally getting well, all your accolades, and now you, you're not going to... Like, act right. to like everybody else now coming back around. I mean, honestly, bro, to me, it's just natural, like, right? Yeah. Like, if you're busting your ass, and I was really, like, hands on with everything, like, mm -hmm. from the setting, like, I know writers by their first and last name at everywhere, you know what I'm saying? Because I was the one emailing them. I would be scouring Twitter just to find the email in your bio to, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that type of person who gets dubbed and then, like, gets popping and then they come back around, it's like, mm -hmm. Natural. And it's cool to you know say no to them, but uh, look, there are a lot of artists like and, like Russell Simmons didn't yeah. recognize the greatness in Nas when he first right. heard his songs. It happens, you know yeah. what I mean? You're not the first, and you won't no, be no. the last. I, I, and, and, I and, see and they pull the receipts on some of those like some yeah. some <laughs> bloggers on Twitter. I, I guess they had or you had emailed felt, them back in the day. They felt some type of way. My whole thing was this though too: is that when Pigeons and Planes sent me the email, I responded in the confidentiality of an email. Mm -hmm. You can literally check my Twitter from 2014 until now. You haven't seen me go on rants about like. I can't believe y'all fucking didn't put. I don't give a fuck about it. So you know it was because they made it public. They made it public where respond. all of a sudden it's like, Russ cares about blog. It's like, no, I responded to an email and y'all blew that shit out of proportion. Mm. And then all these bloggers who like, in the past on Twitter, I've been hitting up like, yo, post my shit, post my shit. And I'm just trying to spam you to get, a, get fucking attention back then. They're like, oh, blogs don't matter. Why are you sending me? I'm like, that was three years ago. That was when they mattered. Now they don't. Uh, so, me, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I, I was behind you in this whole thing with the the blog mm -hmm. thing because you're right. But I think, it, don't you think you're burning bridges though? Like, because what you, bridges? Okay, here's the thing. Well, some so of these I know people, people are influencers. For example, they, I was, influencers in what in what regard? Okay, so curious. look, Russ, I was once a writer and a blogger. Mm -hmm. I was one of those people at that point. Here's, and here here's I am our now. Beef. I'm saying no. Here's our it's beef. Not, oh, I'm shit. just being honest. It's not a beef. It's that just was like, my that was my intuition. Was that you? <laughs> no, I want to talk to you about it. I have no beef. I understand yeah. you completely. Uh -huh. I just want to have a conversation MTV. about yeah. it. Okay, look, I'm not here to defend <laughs> nah, MTV. But like, relax. Nah, I'm just but like, saying, like Rob Markman is my boy who used to be MTV. I get it, but I'm saying boy. people change in the industry. They evolve. Mm -hmm. So a blogger now might not be a blogger in five years. You know what I mean? So like, is it worth burning that bridge down the road? No, but what I'm saying is like, I didn't do any of that shit. I sent an email. And my email, got, it's almost like I sent a text to a girl mm -hmm. about like a topic over here and then she decides to take oh, a screenshot of the shit. It's like, I didn't choose to go public about blogs don't matter. Like, I sent a fucking email. They didn't even ask for anything. You asked them. I mean, it was what it was though. Like at that point, like I'm gonna stand by my shit. I'm never gonna like, you know, back down from my shit, but mm -hmm. it is what it is. So, so you're pretty much just blaming Pigeon and Plays because it wasn't meant to blow up like that. It was an email. Yeah, it was an you email. feel me? All right. It was an email. And like, I feel you. Some bloggers end up moving on to this and moving on to that. And it is what it is. I'm always the type of person like, look, 
if we got a problem or whatever it is, we can have a conversation. Yeah. And if you're not like, I'm always big enough to have a conversation. I love talking. Like, cool, we can have a conversation about it. But the weird thing was that the bloggers that I fuck with, like, I fuck with blogs. Like, DJ Booth, those are my homies, two dope boys. Like, mm. none of the blogs that I actually fuck with were offended. It was the only people who got offended by that shit were the ones who didn't fuck with me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, it's just whatever. I'm I'm not tripping at all. It's okay. a beautiful life. Yeah. No, so look, um, Pigeons, they did respond and say, you're right, like, blogs are not gate- gatekeepers by any means, yeah. right? Like, an artist, you don't need them. So you've been putting out music for a long time. Yeah. Maybe you started uploading to SoundCloud in, what, 2014? And yeah. then, like, continued building from and there? And before that, I put out, you know, the me trying to get on blogs there was 2011 to 2014 when I dropped 11 mixtapes or mm-hmm. albums or projects, whatever you want to call them, but... Um, yeah, you know, it was a lot of work, you know. Yeah, and then, I was listening to your last yeah. album. You say you, you, you've been grinding for like nine years to get on? Ten, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, like 11 now, but like, yeah, I mean, I was... So put, that's where the frustration comes from. Yeah, I mean, but like, to me, that's dope to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like looking at shit where it just looks like you popped out of nowhere because I feel like uh, in hip-hop especially, you need a story. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie, though. When I first heard... And again, it's, it's about when you get introduced mm-hmm. to someone. When I first heard about you, I'm like, he's coming out of nowhere. Now, I did my research, I'm like, oh shit, this is Yeah, but no, no but that's thing. natural and that's fine. That's yeah. how it's gonna come off anyway. Like, when first, you get put onto a new artist, you're gonna be like, you came out of nowhere. The, the but, first time I heard your name, and I hope yeah. you don't take this offensive, like, I remember people <laughs> were talking about you, and then, you know, you know this internet term, they're like, he's an industry plant. And I, of course, that's like. That's the, crazy, the, especially for me. That's yeah. crazy. I have to find <laughs> that's out your like history, crazy. it is. You're right. right, it is. But when I heard it, I was like, well. Huh? I didn't really know too much about him, and now I'm hearing a lot about him, so he maybe be. he is. But then, of course, I did my, my homework on him, uh-huh. and you have spoken about like people who are industry plants, yeah. in, in a sense. Yeah. I mean, what do you really think about that, and when people look at you as that? I mean, looking at me as that is crazy. Yeah. It's honestly crazy, because the come up is documented. Yeah. You feel me? Like, you can scroll down my Instagram, every show I've ever it's done. It's email inbox. Yeah, it's, I'm, right? that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> if we really want to do that, if we, ever, we want to just start posting screenshots and emails, cool. But no, the come up is documented. You know what I'm saying? You can scroll down on Instagram and see me do uh, 80 people in Glasgow, and then you can see me open up for Eminem for 35,000 people in Glasgow. So you can like scroll and watch the whole come up. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can scroll all the way down and see me like do the get in the game segment with Sway and, and everyone, so, um, you know, I, once again, like, innocent people don't need to defend themselves. Like, people know I'm not an industry plan. How you know that is because I have real fans. I do real shows, I sell real tickets. And, you know, a lot of people at home, they don't, know, they don't understand the value of that, right? Because they might see me in an interview saying, like, yo, you're always saying that you sell real tickets. Who gives a fuck? I mean, y'all probably know, but that's the, like, tell all. Is mm-hmm. Can you really... You, you get people when to leave you post their house. A, when you post a link, for your city, mm-hmm. are people showing up? Yeah. And if they're not, how popping are you? How many people you pull out in concert now? Uh, I average? did 10,000 tickets in LA. Really? We couldn't do Staples or the Forum because J. Cole was doing it that night, but we were gonna do that. So, you know, like, people can act like, oh, Russ is just crazy, he's talking crazy, but name me five rappers who did 10,000 tickets in LA right yeah. now. Name five. If name you five. 10,000, you're gonna pop that shit, I get you. Name five. You feel you. me? Name five. Right. And it's like, you know, who who dropped the album in the summertime and went gold that summer? So yeah. look, you built up your following it seemed, yeah. by posting so frequently on SoundCloud. So would you mm-hmm. say they contributed to your success? And they're obviously having trouble, financial trouble and stuff like that. But yeah, they're such I a big platform now. for yeah. indie artists. So mm-hmm. um, what do you see for the? Good. Nah, the f- all that shit is fucking. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna make no money with no SoundCloud. They're good in terms. They're not gonna like shut down tomorrow. But that's what I'm saying though. Like. You know, all that, like, them shutting down is, like, some fucking... You think there's it's just no chance? Fine. Everyone, and not to backtrack, but, but... So you're not an industry plant. Who do you think is an industry plant, man? Huh. Like, like, give me a name, bro. Like, we're, real talk, because we have these conversations a lot. Like, nah, I mean, I mean, but, like, if you can't tell who's an industry plant, then I question, uh, you know... Okay, all right, give me, give me the symptoms of an industry plant from Symptoms your... of an industry plant yeah. are when, like, you literally have zero songs on the internet. Yeah. Or, like, less than five. Mm-hmm. And out of nowhere, you're just like on every single site and you're with this person, you're with this person. It's like, how did you manage to do all that? Because I like, you got to understand, I'm in it. So I'm doing it too. Mm -hmm. I know you can't just get the picture with that person like that. So how did you do that with no backing? You know, you've seen a lot of these industry plans come and go because there's no foundation. There's no story there. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, my whole thing is like the slow build is better than the fake build. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's what... That's kind of what worked for me, was that, you know, it took like, it took mad long, but 
I watched a lot of. Nigga. Huh? I just want to name. You really thought you were gonna trap yeah, him? I'm not gonna trap. I want to name because let me see names that I think about. You know, at one point they were calling Chance the Rapper Industry Plant, but but I think I think everyone's past that. He's definitely not. Right? Look at ask him. Right? I have no idea. Come on, man. No, it, honestly, it, I have no it, idea. Means a yes. No, no, no. I have no idea, honestly. But, um, and I fuck with I fuck with Chance and his people. I have no idea about shit like that. Some some shit just kind of like falls into place for other people better than others. Like, on his acid rap mixtape, you know what I'm saying? He had Justice League beats and and Jake One beats. And so that's Twitter. some industry player shit. Well, I don't know if it, but it's like it's definitely some some shit. It's like ha, like Illuminati shit. Maybe. I don't know because like your coming out party, your debut mixtape when you had twenty five thousand followers, you have Jake One beats and Justice League beats and Twister and. Absol in a video, and mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe that's why Wale said that, that nigga's got nah, some but money. like, well, but but that, like, and, and I'm, it's not a not, no, no, not a knock no. at any of that, You're but it's like, absolute perfect sense. That type of shit, like, I mean, it definitely raises my eyebrows because I'm just like, yo, like, when that was happening, I was just, I was putting people on a chance, yeah. so I was like a fan of the music and shit, but then, like, when I get into it, I'm kind of like, yo, how did you manage to pull that off, though? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because when you have no followers and you look at someone with 25,000 followers or 30. You're like, oh, you're you're popping, but then when you get thirty, you realize like this is not enough to be doing this. Right. So, so I do think, all right, say he was a plan back then. He's transcended right. that though. I think he's earned. His I think I, I think I think Chance is super super smart. Yeah. I think right. he's really really smart. But yeah, I mean, I do like you know, it's just it raises eyebrows to me where it's like, how did you manage to do that? You know what I'm well, saying? So and and if you just had the connections in place, right. that's beautiful because at the end of the day, right? If I have the connections to go make. Uh, uh, this feature happened and this produce whatever, like, of course you're gonna use them. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you'd be stupid to not to, but like, you gotta kind of like question how they did get you it. get them. So different artists get different levels mm -hmm. of support behind the scenes. So you've also addressed, I believe it's on the song, <coughs> maybe Exposed, about um, <laughs> artists pretending that they're still indie, that but they've been yeah. signed this whole time. Is this something that you think happens often? All the time. Really, that fans All don't time. realize. And why All then? The Yo, why? Yeah. I'll tell you why. And I said it in Exposed, because hip hop especially, it makes more sense to root for the underdog. Hmm. So labels will sign you, and I know it because I would go to label meetings and they would say, oh yeah, we got him signed, we're just not gonna announce it right now. All these rappers that get announced that they signed, they were signed a year ago. Period. And you feel this actually helps Period. And that's not me being, hey, that's literally a fact. This is, this is so much of a fact because, uh, you know, like, we, we have a dynamic here and they always ask about people I post. And I'm like, I like posting to people who are independent. I'm fine out half of them aren't independent anymore. Bro. They signed like a year ago. 21 was signed a year ago before he announced. Mm. Um, shit, some of these new rappers I don't even think is public yet, but I'm recently finding out they're signed. Like, I mean, shit, even NBA Young Boy, I thought he was independent, he signed. So most of these guys are signed. Most, most of them are, but the, the thing is, is that the reason why they keep it under wraps is because Fans want to like when it's that early for a lot of these people's careers. Mm -hmm. Fans want to be able to feel like they're a part of the story and the narrative mm -hmm. of the come up. And signing is part of the "I made it" phase. You know what I'm saying? So Do they want to they want to make the "I I'm coming up" phase as long as possible because that's the most relatable. Yeah. And, and I saw I think uh, DJ. And let Heath. me hold, not to cut you off, yeah. but because I already know people are gonna be like, "But you signed, so you've been signed for a year." I partnered, and when I partnered, I posted it that day. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That's we what I was going to say. Ooh, why, though? Right? So, so if yeah. you see everybody, right. like, like right. in Smoke and Mirrors, everyone's getting that extra year of, um, like, underdog support. Yeah. Why do you feel like you got to I'll tell uh, you, be, I, easily why. Uh, unlike other people, I don't have industry connections. I didn't have a connection to the radio. I didn't have a connection to James Corden. I didn't have a connection to this show. You feel me? And if you have that connection... Two chops. Yeah, but like if you have a connection, if, if you have that shit in your back pocket somehow, yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Then you shouldn't, you know, then do you. But uh, I was kind of looking at my situation like, okay, the songs are going crazy. And I don't like, if I have a tune core. If you don't know what a tune core is, then I suggest you literally. If, pause. if, you're, if you're a rapper and you don't know what a tune core is, that's why I said the fun flex <laughs> shit. You, you should learn what a tune core is. You feel me? Like, tune core is my own independent catalog where I still have. 200 plus songs that the label doesn't touch because I had that shit out before them. You feel me? So uh, I got with them because it was like, yo, I have songs that I want to go to that next level and I want radio, I want TV, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you know, a lot of shit that people see, they don't understand that there's people behind the scenes making those opportunities and looks happen, right? But the world just kind of sees you get famous and do famous people shit. All right, so let's keep it on you. Yeah. So you sign and you're I saying- partnered. Oh, I partnered. Okay, partnered. 
Yeah, it's a profit split, which is like, you know, and I encourage every artist to really... But, but isn't that still technically signed? No, yeah, but signed, but you're in a profit split situation instead of a royalty share situation. Yeah. Basically where it's like, okay, I and mean, we can do the math. I have, let's say, 300 songs out, right? Uh, and How big was the advance? It was nice. Millions? Uh, yeah. You, was just <laughs> What's wrong? Not I'm not yet. trying to find out information. Not yet. I'm here to ask questions. Baby. Not yet. All I mean, it was. To it buy was, the chains again. Nah, it was I do want to ask about them chains. You say he got half a million on his neck and his wrist. Yeah. No, like, it was M's plural. But. Oh, word. Um, see, that's all you got to say? My God. <laughs> but, nah. What was I saying? Now you fucking. <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, <laughs> you're, you're saying it's, uh, it's not. Oh, yeah, the profit spent royalty profit shit. Spent. Okay. So you can either get a royalty deal, which is what most new artists out the gate get, right? You got to wait around for your royalties, nine months, 10 months, whatever, like crazy shit. You get no points on your shit. Mm -hmm. uh, I made sure that I built up leverage. You know what I'm saying? I was selling out shows. I was doing all this shit so that the profit split, you get, you know, like I said, let's do the math. I got 300 songs out and I did an album deal. I mean, none of those 300 songs get touched. Only shit on the album. And off of that album, you're going to give me a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. After that money gets recouped, we then split everything 50-50, right? Mm -hmm. So out of those 20 songs, it's really like you're getting 10. So out of my 300 songs, you're getting 10. Wow. So how much of a signing did I sign to? How much of me you did I actually sign to? Much. You know, I, I've, and yeah. that's not to shit on Columbia, because Columbia has been super dope and super great partners. Mm -hmm. And I love everything that they've done. But I'm just here to like use my platform to educate Artists like, look, if you don't have that industry shit in your back pocket where like my dad knew him and my uncle is uh, so-and-so's business manager and I, mm -hmm. my cousin just is his producer and shit like that. If you don't have that, you're sitting in the basement, bro, get popping on your own, you know what I'm saying? And then and, and then cross that bridge when it comes to it. But, leverage know, is... Leverage is everything. Leverage is how you negotiate everything. Cause very important yeah. because I've spoken to a lot of rappers who yeah. have signed recently and they, yeah. they explain that their deal is kind of like yours. But it's only possible with leverage. Yeah. Facts. Right? Because you can't just roll up into some... Nah, some um, but I think the audience probably doesn't... Like, they don't even yeah. grasp totally like, what type of deal you know, people And, sign. and like, I'm, I'm proud of, you know, there's, there's fans maybe who are like, yo, you signed? Like, what are you doing? Uh, you're tripping. Like, you were supposed to be the DIY king, all this shit. But I'm like, yo... Um, that was your thing. Well, it's still your thing. The it DIY still is, came, because right? the way I did it, y'all should really start looking at that. Yeah. The way I did the deal. You it's feel me? The, the way that I still have a tune core. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The way that I still make X amount of money every week independently aside from the label yeah. and still have the shit with the label where that's still making a bunch of money. We're making And you money still kind of have the machine like helping you out right. with the brand. Right. And the We're making money together yeah. and I'm still making money way over here. You know what I'm saying? Like that should really be documented if you're really going to try and like press the issue with yo why did you do this? You should really look into like why I did it oh, and, and, and how it's structured. The, how the deal is structured. So look me? there are traditional label deals right? But yeah. also a lot of artists are now brokering these deals with big streaming services. What do you think of those? So if an artist is independent but they're yeah. making these deals. That's not you... independent then. Okay. You got to look at the definition of independent. Independent means you're not depending on anyone else. You cannot do so, a so deal. So chance independent. I'm just saying you cannot do a deal with a streaming company and say you're independent. You are depending on them. Even if it's a short-term deal? You're depending on them. If I say, look, uh, I'm independent, but I need some money from you to fuck with me, that's me depending on you for the money for me to go over here. Hmm. That's not, that's literally the yeah. anti-definition of independent. Yeah, I've definitely changed my stance on that. I used to be like, yeah, you could just, you could still rock with like a streaming service, but still be independent. But I, I spoke to some people. Yeah, well, very that doesn't high, make any sense, bro. Very that high up in these streaming services, and they call it signing artists. Like they, they're is. considering themselves as signing artists. So if they're signing artists, I right, put it like this, artists. right? Put it like this. Spotify and Apple Music are their own machines, right? You get mm -hmm. playlists. Shout out to Tuma and Carl Terry. Those are the real only gatekeepers in music right now. Mm -hmm. Did you watch our gatekeeper episode? I did. I watched all y'all shit. Okay. Wait, yeah. I think all right, Ross. Oh, well, so we'll go to that. Okay. But uh, Spotify and Apple Music are the machines right now. So it's like, okay, if you go to Spotify or Apple Music and they give you X amount of money so that you can do this with them, that is, fuck calling it a label, but that is some sort of a situation mm -hmm. where like it's, I'm depending on you, you're depending on me. That's, you're not independent. Because for you to operate how you want to operate, you had to go get this big ass corporation to come and fuck with you. 
So that's not independent. You're I'm literally rocking with you completely, but I'm going to play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to use the explanation that we've heard from an artist who did it, right? If I only fuck with the streaming service for just an exclusive window of release in my project, yeah, they, they just pay me for two weeks. It's going to be on their platform. They didn't give me money to make it. Yeah. They only are having my album for two weeks and just an exclusive vi although, <laughs> exclusivity. Yeah, but exclusivity although deal, we never right? know for a yeah. fact that they didn't get money to also, help yeah, with the project, only right? Moving, no, no, we're, we're taking their word for we're that. Taking you're taking their value. word. We're taking which, them at face value. It's, you gotta understand that motherfuckers are professionals in PR, bro. <laughs> Rappers are professionalized, I always say that. So, I mean, look, if you do any of that shit, that aspect is not being independent because you are literally depending on someone to provide this for you. If you weren't depending on them, why didn't you just do it your independent self? Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. So that aspect is not independent. It's just like, it's it's super cut and dry. So right now, not. like it, rappers that you consider independent, who do you think is, is probably on the cusp of like, maybe they could sign to a label or continue in that independent lane? My homie Bugis, that's okay. it. <laughs> just that's, one person? That's one person? <laughs> that's from your crew, right? Yeah, I mean like, because everything else, everyone has situations, right? Situations mm. that they depend on each other. And to me, I just look at it for what, it, and it might be too black and white. It might be too literal that I'm looking at it. Then cool, sue me. But I'm looking at the literal definition of dependent and independence. Mm -hmm. And independence means you are not depending on anyone. So if you're in a situation with this person where they give you this money so you can do this, and this person gives you this money, this company does this, you're not independent. But you can expect that we're gonna see a lot more of these deals moving forward, Yeah, right? I, think, I, think what, I think what hip hop tries to say is that independent means you're not with a label. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that's, that's what Historically, people, but that's now what, it's that's changed what, so much. But if like, that's what you mean, then say that. But don't just say like, independent is a really vague blanket on a career trying to just say like, I don't fuck with anyone, I did all this shit on my, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lie. Because, yeah, you might not be with a label, but you're with 17 other companies. Mm -hmm. So cool. And if a label doesn't mean shit, right, then why should that even get counted as being not independent instead of these other 17 companies you're with? You feel me? So, so it sounds like as soon as you stop just leveraging your hard work and probably social media, just the fans, and you start using other companies, their leverage or money they might give you, you ain't independent no more. Which, no which, which again, could be very vague, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're depending on someone for their shit, you're not independent, it's just that simple. Right, okay, so I understand that like, you work really hard, right? So you produce, yeah. you write, you mix, you master, you do everything yourself, so it's yeah. no wonder that you would feel the way you do because you work so hard to come yeah. this far. How, how, do you long does, wait, how long does it take you to make a track if you do all that shit? Uh, not that long because I just know exactly what I want, so it's actually way quicker if I'm doing it. He just wants help with his mixtape. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, not even, no, because like, I'm always amazed by people who do it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like I always thought about, shoot, Cole. I mean, like, when I'm thinking of people who do it all, and I, I, I like looking at album credits and, oh, the song is made He does by everything? Produce. He does everything, like I, I mixes and about, masters? I don't know about everything. mixes and masters, but he produces. And yeah, no, J. Cole is a fucking idol to me, legend. I got to meet him, which was super tight. But um, yeah, no, I mean, it depends on how, you know, it depends on the song, obviously, but, uh, when you're doing it yourself, it goes quicker because you don't have to do that whole like, yo, can you like pull my vocals over or like, yo, can you turn down the hi-hats a little bit? Like, I'm just doing all that. Mm -hmm. And because I'm doing it, I kind of already have my levels already set. Mm -hmm. I got my shit already set. So by the time I'm done recording, it's already mixed and then it's mastered and then I'm done. So there's no like send it off to get mixed and you got to wait two weeks because that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. That was the bullshit that, you know, people try and tell you is that, you know, you gotta wait for this, but when you're not, when you don't put the hat on yourself, you can get fucking finessed. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when you go do it yourself, you kind of realize like, oh, nah, you were playing me. Like, it doesn't actually take that long. You feel me? Like, I used to edit my own videos too. Mm -hmm. So when people are like, yo, it's gonna take me two months to edit, it's like, no, it's not. It's gonna take you two months to edit because you're only gonna spend three days on it. It's actually gonna take you three days to edit. It's a matter of when do I get those three days from you. Mm -hmm. Well, with all of that considered, mm -hmm. how do you feel about your peers? Or who do you even consider your peers in terms of people who put in the amount of work you do? I don't know if any, craft? well, respectfully speaking, I, and I fuck, with every, I fuck with everyone who's getting it. You know what I'm saying? But You said, I think it was the XXL, the 2016 list. You thought the list itself was trash. I, I didn't I believe. specifically or say Or it wasn't good, or I don't, you know what I mean? Like, no, I didn't say any of that. about the people. No, I didn't say any of that. I said, uh, uh, do, do you think it's trash? The double, the, I the, think there's The last no, two. I think 
I think Double XL has lost credibility. And that's what I said in the, I think, Power 106 interview, but they tried to like blow it out of proportion where I said every list and everybody's on it wait, has wait, been whacked. What do you mean lost credibility? Because they're, at the end of the day, right, uh, they put R&B people on it now, right? Which is fire. How you know it doesn't mean shit is because the biggest rapper and the biggest R&B star have never been on it, Drake and The Weeknd. So, at that point, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. So you would never want to be on it. It's a publicity stunt. No, 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 but also, r rappers or singers, they turn it down, right? Yeah. I, I mean, but it's, I agree with you. I'll tell you. Only, it's, I'll only tell you. They're going off clicks. Like, you know what I mean, if, if you that's get, what I'm saying though. So you get a lot of popularity. I know, but it's 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 not a talent. Double XL is not a talent show. It's a popularity contest. Okay. All right. As because is most of the industry. Right? Yeah, but like you know, people need to understand, and, and it's like, I hate having to explain myself where it's like. But I know, I, I'm super aware of the perception where it's like, if you don't know who I am, you think I'm coming off bitter. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you look up the accomplishments, you would know that I'm actually, like, you should listen to what I'm talking about. Mm. I'm not Bill Simmons talking. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one who didn't play anything in the NBA. I'm mm. the one who's in it talking. Yeah. So, uh, you know, with the double XL shit, it's like, you gotta understand these are companies who need money off of advertisements, which come off of clicks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So they're gonna put who's ever popular on the list. Keep it true, man. You're tired of these mumble rappers on that shit, man. Nah, but like, you know, a lot a lot of them, like, nah, but like, you know, some like, people- some people, rainbow hair color nah. niggas, you're tired of niggas. <laughs> I'm with all of you. You love them. What are you talking about? No, I love okay. you. Right. Okay. Nah, it's not I even matter. I like them. <laughs> but, 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 but I could tell you start looking at it like, man, because I know the algorithm that they use to that list, to curate that yeah. list, right? Yeah. And it's, it's not the one that says, let's, look for the most skilled individuals. It's, yeah. it, it's usually a bunch of other stuff that doesn't include that. Well, and I, I can understand you being in the game, right? Yeah. And you mm -hmm. also commented on the game. You're like, this is not fair for someone like me who may not go that route, but I'm working maybe right. way harder no, than That's me. why it's like actually beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Because XXL has become uh, more about who's the most popular right now instead of who's the most talented. You know what I'm saying? And that's fine. And a lot of those people on that list, like, I got a song with PNB Rock, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's fire. Super dope. I fuck with Ugly God, his personality, his, like, his brand. That's my boy. I fuck with him, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I fuck with Made in T.Y. Like, I fuck with those people, you know what I'm saying? But, uh... That's why I want to know who you consider your peers. It's less about the XXL yeah, list itself. Yeah. Just curious about people you respect as well. I mean, anyone who's doing music at, at, at my age and shit is, you know, that's technically a peer, but, uh, you know, it's... The double XL list is just no longer, like who is uh, successful or who's actually doing shit in rap worth noting. It's more so like, who do we as a company think is a really great fit for branding for our fucking magazine? Right. Because, let me say this, right? Like I said, I fuck with a bunch of those people on that list. What, what is <coughs> ten, it's 10 people, right? Mm -hmm. 10 supposed to be the most popping people in hip hop on the up and up, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. That's what it is, we're gonna all agree on, okay. They do a show at the Best Buy Theater, mm -hmm. all 10, right? Yep. And they do a show at the Novo, all 10, right? Mm -hmm. Novo's 2,500 people. I sold out the Novo by myself with no one on the act in November. I just did the Shrine in LA twice. That's 10,000 tickets. So when I, you know, kind of referencing back, magazines don't matter, Double XL doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you went and got 10 of the most popping artists to not even sell a quarter of the tickets that I just did by myself. So that's why I'm not tripping on that shit because, mm -hmm. and I encourage every artist to just really build that shit up yourself. And, and, and understand that it's not about the look. Sometimes not every good look is a good look. Mm -hmm. At least in the long term. You know what I'm term. saying? Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with you so much. I guarantee, you see, next year's list, because I have a couple people that I think are gonna make it, they're known, no. like Lil Pump, he's definitely gonna be on it. Now Lil Pump is known primarily for his antics, at least I would say by the general audience, yeah. more than his music. But his popularity is just out of here. Like yeah, the kids like, love him. Mm -hmm. Now, he, if he does, he'll definitely make the double XL list, just off popularity alone. Right. Right. Now, I think for his career, and by the way, I, do, I fuck with Pump, it, it, I think his music will catch up to where his popularity is. You do? Yeah, I, I think, well, these days I think popularity is better than talent. It, you, you could see it by Listen, you know the, the you popular know, people now rapping. No, you know the thing with that? Look I, at everybody, everybody popular I, is rapping. The Cash I, Me Outside girl is rapping, don't I, I, I agree she with is. you. I agree with you at a certain level, but at the same time, uh, popularity can only last so long. It's fickle. Talent is what st is what makes you stay. You know what I'm saying? Makes so, you stay, but it doesn't always guarantee your success. There's a lot of people who nah, are very yes, talented. No, what's your thing? You have like a thing. Hard work beats talent every time. Ta some, some. I said right? that shit in a flex. Talent when talent fails. Right. I said in a flex interview though. It's like 
just having talent ain't enough to succeed. It's not. Self belief beats talent when talent yeah. fails to believe. But same shit. Uh, Kevin Durant said that when he got drafted. The hard work shit, by the <laughs> way. Shout out to KD. Um, but I mean, talent's gonna keep you on. Mm -hmm. Fifty has an old interview. Who you know gets you on. What you know keeps you on. And it's just that simple. Like all this fucking fly by night microwave ass music. That's cool, bro. But like, you know, we all know the names who were here two years ago. Right. They had the song of the summer mm -hmm. in Complex and everyone wants to like, yo, how y'all feel like this motherfucker's gonna be? No, and, they're not, and, they don't even and, make and, it to and, winter time. And that's, and that's like a microcosm of the like double XL list. Like if you look at the list three years ago, half the list ain't relevant. Exactly. So, 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 again, so, so what's it based off of then? Is it based popularity? off of talent? No, exactly. That's like you said. Exactly. So that's what, so that's why I'm saying that but, double XL list. But for a kid based on making records, yeah. Right? To cultivate talent or to just get popular real easy by either doing something dumb or yeah. outlandish. Which is easier? If yeah. you want that, if you want that quick, and you know people like no, no one wants to grind for 10 years like you did. Yeah. Nobody wanna do that. No one. Like that's not glamorous. They wanna take the shortcut. That's, that's also not why glamorous. No, but that's also why I have a line where I say uh taking shortcuts could have your whole career cut short. It's true. true. That success doesn't true. last. Period. You know so, what I'm saying? And and I just wanna make it super clear, right? My whole thing, my whole message is just literally, and not to uh, make a pun out of the song that I have to do with myself, but do it yourself, get, get popping on your own, do everything kind of yourself to the point where that no one can fucking play you and no one can tell you that you need me. You know what I'm saying? In that same song, I just said that line, I said, uh, you need me, I don't need you, so just watch how you talk to me. It's like, at the end of the day, you know, you can build it up to the point where the most clicks that someone gets is because you tweeted them or or you fucking with this person is because it's a better look for them to fuck with you now and you were coming up, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. everything, what I'm trying to say is that build your shit up, everything is within you, you know what I'm saying? You're lit, you're gas, you're talented, you're dope enough, you're enough. However, it, it is it is easier said than done because like a lot of people- It's are trying persistence, to, They're trying bro. to figure out that formula on it's how persistent. to do it. Yeah. It's persistent, right? bro. It's if, persistent. if everyone had, had like could put it together like you, yeah. I mean, of course, they would have to be persistent over ten years, right? Yeah. But they would love to be where you're at. Yeah, yeah. but if yeah, but honestly, if you love something, ten years ain't shit. Mm -hmm. I agree. Period. I agree you got to put in your Period. what is it? Ten thousand hours. Ten thousand hours to greatness, day. right? Uh -huh. Shit, right. I, remember, I remember being in college radio, and I said, if I can't sit in the same seat, nobody listen to me. Five hundred people listen. If I can't do this for ten years, don't this do is not it. my passion. Nah, so, I mean, right? period. Like, I don't feel like I've been doing it for 10, 11 years. I just feel like I've been having fun making beats, doing my shit. And getting you know better. Saying? You've been honing And getting your better craft. and like, shit just is like going up. But it's like, I don't feel like, damn, man, it's been a grind. Yeah. Uh, so on this note, let's, let's look forward a little. Okay. All right, so we said rap blogs, of course, not gatekeepers anymore. Uh, well, the only gatekeepers are Carl Cherry and Tuma Basa. Shout out to Carl Cherry, shout out to Tuma Basa. Gatekeepers are like taste Two of my makers. favorite people. Because, I know. Because they don't got you. I would think a gatekeeper is, if they, if they don't put you on their list, you can't get popping. And you I, can, okay, you can. Yeah. You can definitely get popping because I got popping before that shit too. But mm -hmm. gatekeepers in the sense where if you get put, right, in rap caviar mm -hmm. and you're in there for six months. Spotify, can you check, bro? Oh, Jesus. No, 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 I, I, no, I got, I got to ask. Come on. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> okay, no, no. Go I'm not in rap caviar. Okay. You feel me? So, like, I think no. his point is yes, they give you extra shine on no, this. Although they don't even like they don't like the gatekeeper titles. But again, that's nah, a but, tribute to nah, them. But they're great. You know what? I'm not trying to say to like shit on them. Those are the homies. I just was texting like no, no. I'm saying like they should be proud of that. Mm -hmm. Like they're who should be almost a gatekeeper because it's like they're actually really hands-on and in tune with the culture. Yeah. And they're dictating the shit off the playlist and everything like that. But uh, if you get into rap caviar, I mean you're guaranteed probably minimum million, two million spins a week. Mm -hmm. So if you're in that for six months, you do the math. Yeah. I mean, Childish Gambino's label head just came out and said, Redbone success at radio was rap caviar. Right. No, it's You gotta understand because radio moves off of what's popping online. The, the, the only thing you I'm gonna say about that. Hold on, you could right. finesse an entire thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, <coughs> honestly, right? If you can manage to somehow figure out how to stay on rap caviar, stay on A-list hip hop, stay on all this shit, all these playlists for a year straight with one song, you will simply have way more momentum and leverage mm -hmm. to go to say radio with or whatever. I mean, you will just literally, it's about ability and visibility. A lot of people with no ability 
still have high visibility. Yeah. And a lot of people with high ability don't have any visibility. So the, the challenge is learning how to get visibility and rap caviar and all that shit. This whole game is about visibility. And so that's what I want to talk wait, on our wait, final topic. Wait, wait, no, hold Please on. Please just be a great no, question. No, 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 it's not a question. It's, it's added on to that. Listen, we got to keep it 100 because there was a story, and to be fair to everyone who's now hyped upon these playlists, a story did come out about Spotify allegedly taking payments for the playlist. So I'm sure they so, so I that's mean, that's, integrity. That can't we even, gotta always check the integrity that, when okay. we building up these, oh, this is the thing. Bro, if, if they take money to play songs in, no. Honestly, no. honestly though, bro, is that like, obviously that's probably happening, you feel me? And then at the same time, it's like, do you think that that's not happening everywhere else in the industry? You're right. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing that people don't see. They just get fed the shit, they accept it, and they say that if you go against it, you're bitter, right? Like me, right? Like if I if I challenge it, you're bitter. But that's the problem with hip hop right now. And Jay Z said it in this shit: is rap is too sensitive. You know what I'm saying? There's no more Eminem. There's no there's no one right now like calling shit the fuck out. Everyone is so careful. You feel me? Like it's too sensitive. Jay Z says an Al Sharpton line in the world. I'm like, fucking relax. It's rap, bro. It's rap. You feel me? So at the end of the day, there's fuck shit happening. And you know, if you call it out, you look like, oh, a black sheep, and fuck you, you're just bitter. Why don't you just move with the sheep? Because fuck the sheep. That's why. You know what I'm saying? So Spotify getting paid, of course that's probably happening. Just like everywhere else that's probably happening. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, who is really real? Once the smoke and mirrors, once the dust settles, who's really independent? Who's really organic? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, if it really all came down to it, bro, and um, all the dust settled and you had every artist in the world in rap in a fucking room and it was gun to your head and really tell the truth, the entire shit would get shook up. I got one more question, I'm gonna give it to you the next guy. I know, she, she can't wait to go. This, this may have been a misquote or just a fake news shit. Did you say that you, you didn't think that Cole and Kanye were like or as original as no, like- No, because that's some fucking loser recording yeah. my Instagram live, yeah. trying to flip my Instagram live. Okay. What so I was saying is that I was doing an Instagram live yeah. of me like listening to my album. Uh -huh. He's like, man, I, like I'm gassing myself. My album just came out, my debut of shit. I worked my fucking ass off for it. I'm like, yo, I made all these beats, ah. And they're like, well, Cole does that too. And I was just like, he does, but I'm trying to say that like I do everything mm -hmm. and, and I was really trying to say that like on certain songs that I was playing on the Instagram live it was me playing the piano it was me playing the music it wasn't me sampling which I love sampling too, yeah, me too. I sample all the time but I was like yo for this particular song this is me really playing this shit and they were like well he does that and he does that too and I'm like no people the credits but then they try to take that shit as like Russ is trying to say he's more original than J. Cole and Con those motherfuckers are my idols. Fuck out of here with that shit. I'm just literally just mm -hmm. having like basement conversations online, which a lot of times gets fucking. You got a bigger platform now, man. Yeah, I mean, but that's the problem is that you know you have a you have an honest basement conversation and you know it gets fucking taken out of you know proportion. Whatever, it's fine. It Take happens when concepts. you're in the public eye. Yeah, so last fine. note, let's get back to SoundCloud really quick. Here's mm -hmm. what you think the future of the independent artist is. So you seem like you think SoundCloud is good for life. Hopefully they are. No, it's a big platform, no. but what, what happens if they're not good? Is that the best outlet for I don't think that they're indie? good for life. I just think that they're not going under as quick as people were trying to like, they were trying to make that shit seem like a fucking tragedy was happening tomorrow. And I mean, a lot of people days. got laid off. No, it, was, it was pretty bad. Yeah, but, look, but you I'm understand, just saying, that's SoundCloud trying to get investors. And SoundCloud, in order for you to even invest, you have to be a private certain something. No one saved SoundCloud. I didn't save SoundCloud with my tweet, with my king of SoundCloud chain. Chance? Chance <laughs> did not save SoundCloud. And that's not a disadvantage. You made a call, bro. You made a call, from what I heard. That's like me calling the government <laughs> and then being like, listen, we're going to have a president in the next four years. I just got off the phone with the government. <laughs> yeah, I go, yeah, that's kind of what it was. It's like, I'm going to save it. Oh, they're safe. They're giving the credit. You're right. But do you still that's, see but that's them PR shit. As the, you feel me? That's industry. Are they going to remain the most essential platform for industry? I don't know. Or? I'm sure someone will come up with some other shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, SoundCloud is lit, and I appreciate SoundCloud for the come up. You know what I'm saying? SoundCloud was a really dope place. SoundCloud was the antithesis to oh, blogs can't fuck with me. They're they're not willing to whatever whatever. Cool. I'm gonna go over here and create my own blog called SoundCloud.com/slash/Russ. Right. And that's gonna get way more clicks. Then y'all shit, and then that gets popping. So I fuck with SoundCloud for what it was. I mean, the future is crazy. Like, there's probably going to be some other shit that happens that's, you know, bigger than that shit. And Spotify gonna buy that shit out and just flip it into something. Yeah.
I mean, I, I, I'm sure you'll probably start seeing a lot of up and coming artists do uh, deals with, honestly, if they're smart, do just a direct deal with Spotify and say, hey, yo, Spotify, sign me, but just make sure you have every song I ever drop and rap caviar. But then that's, if that ever happens. Integrity. If that, if that happens, that's when that playlist in just Spotify will kind of lose value. Because the thing about value, you have to be exclusive enough to retain your value. Mm -hmm. if, if there's an oversaturation of like, oh, you can just tell like he put his homie on the list. It's all right, well then we don't really fuck with your list that much. You feel me? But I don't know what's gonna happen with that shit, but you know. Yeah, I always say like, once you can be bought, your opinion doesn't matter anymore. Fact. So Wait, did you say that that was the last question? No, we have some more topics, but some fun stuff. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Because I thought we were going to talk about how social media and academics is now the one to go to. I, I'm the one to go to? The new gatekeepers? That was, I got, I mean, I got sent the topics. <laughs> I'm the, I'm yeah, not the, the one to go is, to? It's hard to keep a train of thought, thought with Ak. He likes the Man, bombs. Nah, but, nah, but, I, nah, but I'll tell you this. That was supposed to be at the it, top of the it, Yeah, right. In relation to the blogs don't matter. And because the shit that I got sent, once again in an email, mm -hmm. was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> was, I'm just literally in an email. Are we good Nobody now, leave though? that one? No, we're good. But we're honestly, good. can I say something to you before of course, we move on? Go ahead. Yo, because when I did that whole blog shit, uh -huh. and y'all put up my video, mm -hmm. and you kind of like didn't preface it right, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, interesting. Let's just hit her up and be like, yo, can I come on the show and just like, can I speak for myself? Mm -hmm. You feel me? And you send the email back like, we don't do guests, where that's a full lie because you had a guest that week and you had a guest the next week. So No, I said we were being selective about booking no, guests, which wasn't a well, lie. Well, it's, it's a three of us vote. Am I lying? No, I mean, I saw the email. So it's not, I'm not lying. You said you don't do guests at that time, which is fine. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's that. So you got, this you got a lot of email All receipts, right. so bro. So the first thing he said to me this morning is like, my intuition says you don't like me, but I feel like it's actually the off. other way. Really? I thought I was being pretty normal this morning. No, nah, I mean, you were fine this morning. Absolutely. But I'm just saying like... So you don't like the way I'm just not fake. I'm really transparent. You so what I didn't me, know was that you were upset that you I wasn't emailed upset them about that it. reply and that it became a thing, which I understood. Listen, I, I wasn't upset about shit. My life is fucking phenomenal. You feel me? Like, I see. My life is phenomenal. Whether the media talks about it or not is whatever, but there's a reason why rappers and people in the shit know what the fuck time it is, you know what I'm saying? Because mm. they know that doing the shrine twice in LA is fucked, you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Doing the shows that I be doing is fucked. Putting out an album in the summer and it going gold in the summer is fucked. Doing two plat, it's crazy. No one does that shit, right? So I'm not upset about shit. I'm just passionate about the culture that has allow me to have a platform to express my passion. But don't you kind of want to stick it to him like, yo, y'all were wrong. You were motherfucking yeah, but I, wrong. Yeah but, I know how, yeah, but I know how the game goes. And, you, and, and until the culture does this to you yeah. and puts you in the headlock and says, all right, it's fine, he's with us, anything I say gets looked at as, fuck off, you're just bitter. You know what I'm saying? But to, to that email, it's fine. But okay, I, I, it's really funny that you even brought that up. I kind of want to pull wait, up the email wait, wait, now. The so email where I email. asked, no, the email where I asked to come on the show to oh. speak for myself, for the people at home, when the blog shit happened, I didn't have any relation to any of y'all. Just tweet me, nigga. It, stop. <laughs> because get on my Twitch, man. We let it. Right, go ahead. You're playing. <laughs> but post a video of me saying something, and then I'm like, all right, cool. Give me an opportunity to come up and speak for myself, and you know. Nadeska responded with, we don't do guests. You sure it was her? I guarantee you it was her. I Damn, man. Shit. <laughs> Photographic memory right there. So but you, you said that like, to the end? Were you trying to like, get no, that no, off no. at the top? No, 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 this no. Is, okay, look. No, I just, want, feel, I just wanted to mention that. What do you feel like you just accomplished by doing that? Uh, the truth. That's what I feel like I accomplished. And if you feel free now? Like what? Well, I feel, I, I was but, at a so nine. So we had you up here to have I, the conversation I was now, at a man. nine. I was at a nine on liberation. I'm now at a 10. So yeah, I do feel better. Okay. All right, Are we yes. good? You're gonna have an interesting. You're a very talented kid. I just think you should think about the way you deal with people. I, I, Maybe. Hold on, hold on. I know, and I can know. I, I can tell that you're rubbed the wrong, wrong way by that. But then you. It should... was all good, but we had the whole conversation. Why drop that at the end now? Because I just big mess on you. It. <laughs> Pull the all big right. mess. Because no, no. But we'll honestly, find the email. we'll put the whole exchange on. Honestly, on, because um, I just now on the remembered show, it, so everyone can see <laughs> it. Oh. Okay. I literally just now remembered it because it, because I was thinking, oh. You said the last question. I'm thinking, oh, there's more topics. Hey, so wait, I brought wait, it up. No, no, I, don't have, I don't have any, I don't know you don't cool. have any personal problems. Do you ever think about like, 
even if that's the case, you, you, you don't want to bring it up or you want to be careful how you like you no, mention bro, these things because you might turn people off. And no, because there's no more, there's no more blackballing. It's 2017. Everyone in the entire industry could hate me. But guess who doesn't? My Your fans. fans. So it doesn't matter. I can go. So even the desk could like send this shit to spam. You good. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's one ticket. That's one album sale. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter. So no one fuck with me anyway. Bro, just CC me on the email next time, dog. I got you, dog. Just CC me nah, on the email, but, bro. But I wanted to say, no, because the time... <laughs> I fu- right, listen, there's no... There's no... Because I know you're like, yo, fuck this. You're a fucking piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Nah, we invited you here to have the conversation. I just think it's funny that at the end of a 45-minute conversation, you want to throw out this email shit. So cool, maybe I should put up the uh, just the email from your label and everything. You want to throw the whole chain up? Right, well you, well, you just contradicted yourself. You didn't invite me here. We asked, can we come up here? And, then you and here you are. We I know, and I'm super. I'm super appreciative. I'm just saying. I'm a, <laughs> to say what the truth is. You're feeling emotional in a type of way because it's the truth, and it is what it is. I'm completely fine. You ever email me, bro? It's not. Shut up. Seriously. <laughs> no, but I, with the with the social media shit, it is it is lit because I, I remember the topic that y'all sent. Where it was like, these are the topics. Mm-hmm. It's super tight to see that you know the topics. Are, oh, how do you feel about academics being kind of like? the shit where social media leans towards instead of the blogs. But that's a testament to back to the whole shit doesn't matter, whatever, whatever, because you didn't come up on a blog. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You came up on your own. It's on YouTube, hustling, you got so pop- You got so popping on your own that a blog had to hire you. Talk about it. That's how little a blog matters, is that someone who didn't come from a blog got so popping that a blog had to give them money to be like, yo, can you go give our blog some uh, you know, credibility? Russ, you're kind of you're kinda spin facts. <laughs> Listen, you don't have to like it, but it's the truth. And the truth was never meant with just, oh, I love the truth. Yeah, I'm, I'm it was you. always meant with just a fucking... I, you know, I identify with him a lot because, I mean, shit, really. Of course, now people can say, okay, you're, you're connected with Complex, but before, I literally had... A fucking computer, my chair, yeah. and a microphone. And you got popping. In my crib just trying to make make videos, and I eventually built it up. So now I got a studio and all that. But yeah, that's what that, I did over years. I did it since 2011. So of course I understand. Bro, your you're, whole, you you are the the in your field, you're me. Because you put out mad content on your own, got so much of a demand and so much of an audience on your own that your field of people, the higher ups in your field, the complexes, had to reach out and be like, yo, you gotta come fuck with us because we need, Talk the, we about need it. those clicks. Talk about it. It's reality. Cool, you guys feel good? Yeah, that's what got that my man up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Russ, man. Yeah, that's just true. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie, man. <laughs> All right, man, you guys wanna do Can I See It? Uh, or do absolutely. you wanna talk some more? The desk Absolutely. guy still love you. It's just yo. It's, it's all good, love. Russ. You're not the only one who's worked really hard for a long time to see. Oh, some look success. at this! So look at like some weird just shade. Just being emotional over here. Anyway, let's get to can't see the see weird it shade. Get another fist Popeyes. Let's take a look. This was in Texas. Can you imagine looking I mean, into like, Popeyes and yo, seeing this? Ever, when I see shit like that, right? Is it ever that serious? What? Which and, and I and then I say and then I say to Rush. myself, it is. You know if, what I'm saying? If, if this fight was over a five dollar box, it's completely worth it. Absolutely. Completely I feel worth you. it. I mean, look, bro. It's it's it all comes down to your mindset. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and by the way, being a little bit serious because there was a little bit yeah. of backstory to the video. I actually I seen don't it. know the context. Uh, yeah. Apparently, there was a pregnant woman that was like, I don't know if someone hit her, and that's why everyone was trying to come to the defense of the broad. Oh yeah, well at that point, honestly, but see, that's that's what's fucked up about shit like that. Like you show a clip to us, Sick. and it's just people, and you just like want to laugh at it, but then like maybe the context is someone's mom got yeah. hit. You know what I mean? So. Some of that shit, a lot of that shit is justified. Yeah, it's funny when we think about it. They find them with a $5 box. <laughs> it is. Yo, you ever had a choice? Oh, it's not just too much sodium, though. I had to cut that shit out, yo. 
I'm man. recently vegan. Like, I'm doing this whole thing. Man, yo, I was eating a hell of five-dollar boxes. They put me on fucking complex cameras. I look fucking bloated. I mean, I still look bloated, but I'm trying to cut it down. Go vegan. Just for like 20 vegan? days, bro. You'll catch a vibe. I'm going to try. Yeah, you just slim up, like, you know, on camera. It's for you. I'm just trying to help you out, bro. All right. All right. That's good advice. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try it. 20 days is a lot, though. He's I'm on like 24 try. days. Really? Yeah, but like, whatever. Uh, let's do one more. Um, this quick me, and this is kind of a tough one though. If Biggie and Pac got in your car and they said, play me the best album since I, I died. I saw this tweet. Whose album would you play? <sighs> wow. Well, that, that context is fucked. I'll tell you why. Because you're not saying, play me the best album, your favorite album. You're saying, play what you think they would like. That's what that tweet is, is play what you think they would like. Okay. If Biggie and Tupac were in your car, that's like saying if you have a uh, fucking... That's an interesting twist, because I, I was just thinking just time period, but you're saying... No, no it's they literally would fuck if... Because put yourself in the situation. If these two human beings are in your car, play them what you think they would fuck with the most. Right. I mean, you have to go with, like, uh, what they would fuck with the most. Uh, some Kendrick shit, for sure. Mm. Mm. Good classic? Nah, what they would fuck with the most... I love Good Kid, Mad City, but uh, since I died, I don't know, I'm super young. I don't know, bro. I mean, shit, whatever. Some probably some Kendrick shit. That's but I'm like new in the I'm, generation. I'm, I'm so going with, with some from, from Fifty. You know what? If it's mixtapes, Get Richard I Try might be <coughs> juice right there. Or you know what mm -hmm. I would probably play? Some DMX shit. Okay. Yeah, honestly, some DMX. It's dark and hell is high. You know what I mean? Like some shit like that. But you gotta look at the 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 tweet is really asking. <coughs> it's not saying play your favorite album. It's saying play what you think those two people would fuck with. Interesting twist. If you got people in your car, right, and you're like, you, you know, I, everyone's been there. Where like you got people in your car and you want to play your shit, right? You want to put people on, but then at the same time you're aware of like who's in your car. Mm -hmm. So you're like, me, like, I don't know, like you can't. Maybe you don't really fuck with that. I gotta play DJ right now. Like you might be fucking with some others, yeah, ah, ah, shit, you know what I mean? So the context of the, of the tweet is a Too stressful skewed. people to DJ for. <laughs> All right, thank you, we did Oh, it. we didn't do the uh, who body do shit? Oh shit, my man wanna do more topics, I like this. Yo, you might have to film for Joe every Friday though, that ass. Let's get it. Now, Chops didn't hook us up with who body do. What? But we did grade the bars though. Did we grade, no, we didn't grade the bars. No, we just left it. You watched the show, I can tell. Style. Yeah, no, I mean like. the show, man. I mean, <laughs> I study shit, you feel me? Like, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I think, and I said it when this shit dropped, and like, <laughs> all whatever aside, I know you're like, I fucking hate oh, you. Oh, can we squash this beef? Okay, can we no, there's beef? not a beef. I don't like for you, one, to call me emotional. Well, don't do that. Well, you Just say you're emotional. mad, you're annoyed. Cool, like, stop with the emotional. If there was a dude, you wouldn't say that to him. Yes, I would. And two, yes. I think, Actually, I yes, just I would. think, I think it's a little corny, I'm not gonna lie. Like, uh -huh. you're up here, we had the conversation. Right. Like, you were clearly, like, waiting to, like, no, bring up no, the see, I think that shit's, like, really corny, no, to be honest with no, you. But it's your, cool, we no, already had see, the convo. I know, but you said in, what you had to no, say. in your head, you think that I've been sitting here, like, oh, I'm gonna wait for the right you don't know politics that goes on behind the scenes. Actually, you know, you know. Yes, I do. So for you to, like, want to specifically bring up the email I response? literally random why why you're I here random, now I you're random, here now I randomly remembered it so for you to think that I'm sitting here calculating it I've been up since fucking seven last night I did a fashion like my brain forgive me I've been touring for a year and a half straight I'm a little cloudy you feel me I wasn't sitting here like when is the right time to bring up the email I know all these topics are great but when is the right time to strike I'm sitting here like living a life and then I'm like oh eh. It's not that serious, you feel me? So, and I would have told, if he got emotional, I would have told you, you're getting fucking emotional. I can't sometimes wait till somebody calls you emotional, but no one, calls you, no one calls you emotional, though. What? Joe said I act like a bitch sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> not, hey, yo, you see how they do me sometimes? Yo, you act like a bitch right it's now. It's not that, you know, everything is beautiful. Everything is lovely. I'm just, you know, I, I'm appreciative of, of the platform, and I'm appreciative of, of anyone who fucks with me. And, and I'm just here to literally provide a truth. A lot of people are super politically correct. A mm -hmm. lot of rappers are really sensitive to offending people. A lot of rappers are super scared now. There's no more of that. When I met Eminem, I like I realized like there's a lost energy of that where it was just kind of like like calling people out like fuck you, fuck, don't put me sitting next to him. There's like there's a lost energy in that right now in hip hop. There's a void where everything is just like Lottie fucking die. You feel me? And it's like there needs to be some sort of if I gotta be the fucking and not saying I'm the next I mean, none of that shit, but if I gotta be the only one to kind of be the like ruffle the feather, sh feather shit, like 
So be it, because it's genuinely how I feel. Yo, I'm rooting for you so much, man, but I'm hoping, like, you aren't inadvertently just closing doors on yourself. It's impossible, I, bro. I mean, like, it doesn't have to be people, but just, like, brand... People might be like, yo, he's a little bit too... Like outspoken, like he he does he doesn't yeah, but treat honestly, situations bro, but, but like right, you man. gotta you gotta look at what I got into it for, bro. Yeah. I got into it to make songs. I didn't get into it to man. I gotta really mind my p's and q's so I can get the deal with fucking uh, you know uh, Reebok. I don't give a. F I didn't get into making songs when I was seven writing raps in a notebook. I wasn't like man. I'm doing this to get the deal with Reebok. I don't give a fuck. You feel me? I'm just making songs and I'm putting them out and the people who fuck with it fuck with it. If you don't, you don't. It is what it is. I keep it pushing, you know what I'm saying? And that's, I'm in, I'm into this shit because I like to make music and I like to make hard ass beats and I like to make raps and I like to make hooks and I like to ride around to that shit in my car. And that's it. And then I have opinions on shit because I'm not uh, like, I'm not gonna be censored by shit. I don't have someone behind me pulling strings like, yo, you better not say that shit on camera. You got a brand you're about to offend. You got to, I don't have that shit. I don't give a fuck, you feel me? Hey, so, one random question that just came to my mind. Um, so like in production, right? One of my critiques about J. Cole, I feel like he need to stop rapping with his own beats. Like you ever you ever think for yourself, like, maybe I should look at other people's production? Because sometimes like you you, you get a sound. Like, you know, yeah. producers have sounds, right? Well for me, I feel like my my uh my shit is so diverse, and I know everyone probably says that, right? But it is. I feel like at the end of the day, if you look at four singles of mine, do it myself, pull the trigger, losing control of what they want. The fact that the same person who made Losing Control made Pull the Trigger, which is all like bought, like, I don't have the same shit. You okay. know what I'm saying? Also did Cherry Hill, like, you know, a bunch of other shit. So, nah, I feel, you know, it, it's working. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's when producers and people fuck up because you came up off of this. And once you got on, you started doing this. So why are you now surprised that no one fucks with you? It's because that's not why we fuck with you. We fuck with you for this. Just do this over and over again. That's why I fuck with Drake heavy, because he made them some ballads, man. Drake just literally does Drake over and over again. That's why it wins. With a Jamaican accent now. But yeah, so but good. I'm saying like it's still Drake. People, if you fuck with Drake, you fuck with Drake. You know what I'm saying? Because he does Drake mm -hmm. over and over again. It's it's fucking like it's just genius to me. It's legendary. But on the flip side. You get Kanye who does College Dropout, but then does 808s and Heartbreaks, and it's still fucking amazing. Every album that's different. legendary. That's legendary too, but that takes, you know, that's some shit. That's a lot of genius bro. right yeah, there. Word. That's yeah. some shit. That's some shit. Yo, excited to see what else you do. I respect your grind. You make great music. Thank you. Not mad at any of it. Wish you much I'm about to success. You on Twitter, bro. Continue being outspoken. Oh, hold on. Can I say something to mm -hmm. academics? Sure. Look. Uh, this is going to make me sound like bitter and fucking whack. That's uh, all whatever. good. No, it's all good. Well, I mean, me and my homies, right? We be talking like, Academics posted uh, like a clip that I did in an interview, right? Mm -hmm. It was like, yo, Russ speaking fast. I was like, oh, that's dope. Academics posted that. What's weird to me, right, is that I'm on the show and I'm super appreciative to be on the show, mm -hmm. 100%. And this is not, I was not waiting for this moment. You Don't worry, me? I'm not getting emotional. Just get your thoughts. I'm you straight. Me, right? Yeah. That's cool. But, um, you know, you post every rap, oh, they did this in their first week. A lot of rappers you posted less than me in that first week. But, you know, when I do my first week, or when I do gold, or whatever, when shit is platinum, when I sell out shit, you don't be posting it. And I know why, you know what I'm saying? I know why, because you're a different version of a somewhat double XL. You post the popularity. But I thought you you guys were the same in different fields or whatever. No, no, you're no. You're just throwing no, shade. No, 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 no. I, you're just I mean, throwing I mean, shade. I mean, he, he's making sense. You just I, post. I've noticed that. No, well, well, usually I do the first week. I missed your first week because y'all haven't been out for a motherfucking long time. Now, what no, I have noticed. May 5th, it's not that long, but yeah. Yeah, sure. no, no, but it's still on the charts, doing very well. Yeah. Right? Now, I've noticed that your album still is sticking on the charts. Now, I missed the first week, you're right. I missed the first week, um, but I usually try to get all the rap releases. I, you're right. No, he's right on that. He's right on that. I'm going to add you in, bro. You're right. You're right. I, I'm, and, not, I'm, I'm not, not, I'm not, I'm not saying. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you yeah. why. I don't you wanna, post popularity, but no, no, you want to think it's, it's like, no, no, it's, it's fine. I don't, want, I don't want to just say it's like a double XL thing, but like my audience, like I cover a bunch of, I can't cover every rapper. Like, you know what I'm I mean? I'm not asking you to cover me. I'm just honestly, no, 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 I'm posing the question so that, you know what, people in YouTube comments who are weird can like comment that. No, that's true um, though. But at the end I'm of the a, day. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. It is what it is. Because you, you know, you look at like, you know, I mean, this is what it is, bro. You look at shit like that and you're kind of like, okay. Why don't nah. you be included? You know what? I feel like you were one of the rappers that, like, you're, of course, you're, you're a rapper, but 
you're not included in most of the stuff that people. Well, it's not. It's not mainstream media popular to include. Okay. Them. All right. You're right. Exactly. And that's why you don't cover it. And, and also. And that's why I say the double XL thing because it's. And like, also, I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure you out too, man. I couldn't. Fi There's nothing to figure out. Well, not, me. another reason why I thought you were an industry plant because I think. Ah, <laughs> no, this no, no, is no. crazy. No, 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 no. No, I don't think that no more. What, what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I didn't post you. Because yeah. one of the first times I heard about you, your label emailed me. And I'm like, mm, I don't deal with labels, period. Yeah. I, I just really curate. Oh, so social. you wanted me to email you? No, 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 of course not, no. But what I'm saying is when I see a label mm -hmm. introducing an artist rather than me just, I'm on the internet. I'm on the, I'm on I mean, honestly, nigga. bro, if you follow hip hop, where are you from? From Jersey. I, mean, I was born in Jersey. So born in Jersey. Where? So, yeah. Okay. So. I mean, if you follow hip hop and you don't know the rapper who's doing X amount of tickets and going gold and platinum, I question see, I if you know. actually follow hip hop. No, well, Honestly, see, I question if you actually follow hip hop. Well, well, see, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know, but then I have to question if you actually follow hip hop. Now, there's, there's a lot of amazing rappers, though, Doesn't who matter sell about a lot of tickets, that, but you can't Name know them. everyone. All right, Name guys, them. we have to wrap it up, so. Name them. Let, final thoughts, and I mean, you can continue this off camera. <laughs> Please. No, no, no. I mean, the, yo. Just so that people no, no, yeah, no, 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 yeah, I mean, there's not a finite. Group, no, I like this comment. There's not a finite group of rappers, right? Who are either popular. Bro, you can't yeah. name on your left hand a rapper who has sold more tickets than me in LA. You just can't. You literally cannot. I mean, wait. Are we talking about all rappers? All right, guys, we gotta go. Shit that but Russ and Ack are gonna keep talking. Maybe we could like live stream it on Instagram. It's a story for you guys. Thank you for you know watching, exactly Russ. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you being. Thank up you here. for having me. This is beautiful. This is we'll great. Shout out to all the YouTube commenters who are gonna be fucking weird and make weirdo claims. But motherfuckers keep winning in life. Suck my dick. You don't like YouTube commenters? Not the ones who be talking out of their ass.